Today's preach is, is aimed at people that don't necessarily know the Lord. And I'm going to continue in that vein uh, because we've taken the decision to record these. And it could be that after today, not just today's, you may feel that I'd like someone I know to, to listen to this. And you can just forward them to on a WhatsApp. It's on YouTube as well. It, it's, it's the gospel. But specifically, we're talking today of, I think I'm a good person. That's, that's what I think. I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't think I've met anyone who, who doesn't want to be a good person. I, I don't know anyone. I don't think I've, I've met anyone who actually wants to be a bad person, if we use that expression. Um, we've, been, you know, we've grown up being told by our parents and teachers that uh, there are good people out there and, and there are bad people out there. And we were brought up with instructions to stay with good people in our friendships, to listen to good people when receiving advice and to stay away from bad people. That's what we were told. And when we were very young, some of us may um, have been warned about staying close to mum and dad because we, quote, might be taken away. By a bad person. And we were told there are bad people about. So be careful in life. And sometimes someone in our neighborhood disappeared for a few months or a few years. And we wondered why, where they, where they were, where they'd gone. They come back again. And eventually someone will tell us that they'd done some bad things and gone to prison. And it's kind of whispered that that was the reason they disappeared. And even 60 years ago, young women went away from their home and neighbourhood for several months and their families would keep their secret. But they were pregnant outside of marriage and had gone away to, to have a baby, which would often be adopted. And in society, generally, having a child out of wedlock was seen as a bad thing, though it wasn't a crime that deserved prison. But when we actually opened the newspapers and read about bad things that had happened that were, that were crimes, the newspapers didn't mince their words about the badness. They, they didn't talk about this bad person or that bad person. They said evil so-and-so committed this crime. Evil so-and-so, whatever the name was, committed that crime. And for many years, if you asked someone to name a person who they thought was evil, they might say Adolf Hitler. It's quite a typical response. And if you asked them who they thought was a good person, many of them would say Mother Teresa is an example of a good person. Adolf Hitler killed millions of people, while Mother Teresa helped people by feeding, clothing and giving them shelter. So we've been brought up to understand that if you do bad things, you are a bad person. If you do good things, you are a good person. But what happens as society changes? Something that was regarded as bad 60 years ago is not necessarily regarded as bad today. In this country, the idea of an adult man marrying a 12-year-old is, is unacceptable. In this country, that is unacceptable. Where in other countries, it's, it's seen as within the law. And it's fine. And we know that the values of societies change throughout the generations. And if you and I lived in the American South 200 years ago we would be brought up to believe that slavery of black people was a good thing. And everyone around us would think so too. You could be a slave owner and actually think you were a good person. And today we might say, I don't think what I'm doing is wrong. Look, you know, everyone else is doing it. And when I was in my 20s, someone I respected at the time tried to persuade me to make a false insurance claim on my car and lie about what happened. Everyone does it, Chris, he said. 
In other words, if many other people were doing it, then it wasn't a bad thing to do. If I was doing it, I would be part of, of that crowd. Safety in numbers. So what we regard as good on the one hand and bad can vary depending on where we live and in which period of history that we live in. It's a moving feast. And who we see as a good person or a bad person can vary depending on where we live and which period of history we live in. So back to today, if I was to ask people, do you think you're a good person? Surely most people would say, yes, I think I'm a good person. And if I asked, how, how do you measure yourself to see if you're a good person? Someone might say, well, I haven't killed anyone. I don't steal. I try and be kind. I'm no worse than Maria. Sorry, Maria. <laughs> and, and I'm better than Angela. And in other words, the answer is, compared to everyone around me, I think, I think I'm a good person. And the answer to my question, how do you measure yourself, is I measure myself by comparing myself to those around me. That's how I measure myself. And everyone has their own ruler to measure other people and to measure themselves. So for some people, depending on when you, when you were born and where you live or which country you are, that's enough to be good. For someone else, you have to be up here. And we just think we're somewhere in the middle between these two, perhaps, depending on your ideal. But everyone's got their own ruler. So somebody calls something good, for you it's not. You, some, you call something bad, they think, no, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. And yet there is a ruler to measure every person fairly, objectively, without bias. And it's God who holds the ruler. And everyone, everyone has fallen short of his ruler. And Jesus was approached by someone who called him good, good teacher. And he replied, why do you call me good? He said, no one's good except the Father, who is God the Father. Mark chapter 8, verse 18. And so we come to the truth that God is the one, the only one, who is good. And he's the only one for you and I to actually compare ourselves with if we want to see what good looks like and we fall short and because God is unchanging when we go back 10 years or 50 years or, or 5,000 years we find that he hasn't changed his ruler is the same and his goodness hasn't changed and he is the standard and we can be confident that if we come back in 10 years time or 50 years time or 500 years time we, he will not have changed and even though our societies change, our values, they come and go, God remains constant. And if we compare ourselves to ourselves or other people, we, we will get a false reading. And in that sense, we need to be recalibrated with God's goodness as the measure and we, we come up short, way, way short. But that's what happens when we don't look up. We need to look up if we are to see ourselves as we really are. You know, I used to have uh, fun with our kids when they were growing up. They used to weigh themselves in the bathroom scales and... Uh, I said, go and have a look how much you weigh. And they used to step on the scales and then behind them I would just press the scales down with my foot. 
and add maybe another stone or something like that. And at first, when they didn't know, it was like, whoa, am I really that heavy? Um, until they latched on, that it was a false reading. And, you know, in, in my work, you know, some years ago, uh, where there was trucks and truckloads of valuable commodity, we used to have weigh bridges. But, you know, the weigh bridges, by law, have to be checked and calibrated every 12 months, by law, because otherwise you have a false reading. And, you know, we have false readings of what we think good is, because we're using the wrong ruler, the wrong measurement, we need to be recalibrated because only God is good. That's how we calibrate ourselves. The scriptures say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And, you know, the natural disposition that we have as human beings is to shift and change with the environment that we're in, with the crowd that we're in, that we're moving around with. And somebody might say, go ahead, go ahead, it's, it's only a white lie. Come on. It doesn't mean you're a bad person if you do that. And people will change, but Jesus Christ, as the scriptures, never changes. He's the consistent one. He, he's our measure of goodness. You know, we can travel with the crowd, thinking that if most people are going that way, then it must be the right way. We may feel safe that way, that safety in numbers, but what a mistake. And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, he says, enter through the narrow gate, for wide, wide is the gate, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few will find it. So we come back to, I think I'm a good person. You know, it's when we think we're self-sufficient, that we're good in ourselves, that we don't look and find God. Because we have no reason to look, because we think we're okay. And what we call a good person in our everyday language, the Bible calls righteous. So, in other words, if you do good, you do right, you do the right thing, you live right. I think I'm a good person then becomes, in biblical language, I think I'm a righteous person. And yet God says everyone has sinned, done wrong, and fallen short of the glory of God in Romans chapter 3. And he says all our righteous acts, everything that we do that we think is good, are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, the scripture says, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Isaiah chapter 64. The wide gate the broad road that leads to destruction. And that's where we're heading, all of us, until we actually look up and acknowledge God who made us, recognise our condition before his holiness and ask for his forgiveness for going our own way. And his love is waiting for us to do that. Will anyone be able to stand before God in our own righteousness, our own goodness, on that day of reckoning, that day when we will all be judged? Will anyone be able to stand? And the scripture says, no, no one will be able to stand on our own. Not in our own goodness. Only by confessing to God that we lack any righteousness of our own and believing in his son, Jesus Christ, Can we receive the righteousness of Christ that allows us to stand before God? We cannot hold on to our own righteousness, which makes us self-righteous and condemns us, and actually receive the righteousness of Christ at the same time, which saves us. We, We need to give up what we're holding on to. We need to let go 
in order to receive the gift of God. And and what do we give up? What is it that we give up? We give up our self-righteousness and we receive the sure hope that is Christ, the only standard of goodness. So that if we wobble, if we stumble and sometimes fail, we can rely on Christ's goodness on our behalf, if you believe. Do you know why, even this week, um, I was reminded of my own lack of goodness in myself. Uh, it was moments when we were tired, long journeys, and I, I wasn't the patient person that I'd like to be. And Julie will tell you that. And uh, afterwards I reflected and I thought, you know, maybe it was because I was preparing for today. You know, we cannot rely on our goodness before the Lord. Our sins sweep us away. We need to come to the Lord and receive Christ's righteousness. And then we can stand. And then we don't do it with pride. We do it with a sense of humility. Christ who died on our behalf for the goodness that we don't have. Christ who died on, on our behalf for the righteousness, the holiness that, that we don't have before God. You know, many of us have experienced the kindness of a stranger at different times in life. Or even sometimes received kindness from someone that we don't know very well. And how do we respond we thank them, don't we? We think, why would they do that? We might say, thank you, you didn't, you didn't have to do that. I know I've experienced that. We say, thank you, that, that's, that's kind of you. And sometimes we might say, thank you, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this kindness? And in Romans chapter 5, it says, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, going our own way, doing wrong, it was then that Christ died for us. The kindness of God. The great love of God. Even though we lived and behaved as strangers towards him. Enemies even. Separated from him by our own doing. Christ died for us. And you know the instinct to do good in each of us. Because of the conscience that God has given us. It's there, that instinct, because God has given us a conscience of that right and wrong. It's our guide in here that there is such a thing as goodness. And if you've never done so, take the opportunity today to lay down your own threadbare and soiled version of goodness and receive the gift of God, the righteousness of Christ, the clean clothes of a Saviour, the promise of life to come, and receive your adoption as sons and daughters of God, as your Heavenly Father. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, so different to ours. We thank you for your ruler. When we've been kidding ourselves with our own little rulers, everyone having a different version, different lengths, different units, calling ourselves good, that person bad. Father, we thank you that there is an objective ruler that only you tell the truth. And we can trust you. 
And Lord, the conclusion is that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And that's why we need a saviour. We need someone who can allow us to stand before you, Heavenly Father. Not in our own righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ. Father, we thank you for your kindness. Sometimes we say, Lord, are you sure? But you say, I'm willing. I love you. And Lord, for those of us here this morning that actually are the other way, we, we're not convinced of any goodness in us at all. We actually think we're bad. Through, through and through. And if anyone's listening to this, well, they may think they're bad through and through. Maybe they've been told that since, since they were young, very, very young. That they're not worth, worth anything, they won't amount to anything. That they are rotten to the core, through and through. Maybe they've been called you little devil all the way through their lives. Maybe teachers have put them down. Parents, Father, we thank you, Lord. But it doesn't matter. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And we can all receive the goodness of God. We can all stand in the righteousness of Christ by faith for those who believe. So I'm just going to pray a prayer now for those who don't know the Lord, have no relationship that they can point to in their lives, no sense of hope or sure hope or confidence about where they're going and knowing the Lord God. So I'm going to pray this prayer for those who want to receive Christ by the Holy Spirit. And for those who want to receive Christ, pray this prayer with me. Inside. Father, I recognise I've been going my own way in life, doing my own thing, measuring myself by my own standards, cutting corners, convincing myself that what I'm doing is good enough. That I can blag my way into being a good person, into even getting into heaven if there is a heaven. Father, I've never been sure, but now I'm sure that I need you. That I cannot stand in my own goodness, I cannot stand in my own righteousness. And Lord, I come to you and I confess my sins. I confess my wrongdoing. And Lord, I ask for your forgiveness and I receive your forgiveness. And Lord, I want to live for you. And Lord, I receive your Holy Spirit to help me to live a different life, to live for you. Trusting in what Christ has done for me on the cross in taking my wrongdoing. Trusting in his standard of goodness, not my own. Lord, I no longer think of myself as a good person. But I think of myself as a servant of a good God. I think of myself as a son of the Most High God. Adopted out of love. And with open arms. Thank you, Lord, that my sins are washed away. When I come to you. And Lord I receive you. As you receive me. I receive you as my heavenly father. As you receive me as your son. As your daughter. Thank you Lord that. You will change me from here today. Day by day as I trust you. That a corner has been turned. The direction of travel is changed. We thank you Lord. I thank you that it's all by your grace and nothing of my doing. In Jesus' name.